Welcome to On the Edge with J.P. Divine from Central Maine Sunday. On the Edge with J.P. Divine Audio is made possible by our subscribers like you. Thank you for listening and supporting local journalism in Central Maine. Now here's J.P. Divine. Did you know that George Washington, military hero and founding father, our first president, had only one tooth in his mouth when he became president in 1789? That's true. More on that later. Here's how this is going to work. I will teach you this morning a couple of things, myths, probably, legends, for sure, about history, both in art and politics, both American and European. Hey, sit down. If I can spend hours researching and cutting and pasting and stuff, you can sit there with egg on your robe and listen to me. These are stories that I learned from old wise men while eating lunch on loading docks and in railroad cars and from successful writers at lunch counters. I was young, malleable, and appreciative. First, first, about those dead men on iron horses. Sit down. I'll get to POTUS George in a minute. I'm sure you're as disturbed as I am about the rampant nationwide and foolish destruction of ancient metal statues of men, both heroes and villains, saints and kings, who were honored with statues that would eventually wind up in parks, plazas, and museums. The protesters' anger is centered on the belief that the monuments glorify white supremacy, memorialize an unrecognized treasonous government whose founding principle was the perpetration of slavery. Oh. The presence of these Confederate memorials over 100 years continues to disenfranchise and alienate African Americans. Okay, that's true. I'm sure you agree. Now the interesting part. According to the urban legend, if the statues shows the horse posed with both front hooves up in the air, the rider died in battle. If the horse is posed with one front leg up, it means the rider was wounded in battle or died of battle wounds. And if all four hooves are on the ground, the rider died from causes outside of battle, like uh, being thrown from the horse while competing in a rodeo. None of this is related to the deceased Maine Supreme Court, Justice Melvin Fuller's statue outside Kennebec County Courthouse, who allegedly died in bed and never competed in a rodeo. Just leave Mel's statue as it is. Okay, then there are the historical legends backed up by the work of serious, serious scholastic work. And we come to George. Yes, <clears throat> George Washington, military hero and founding father, our first president. Sister Rosanna told us that his false teeth were made of wood. The truth is his dentures were made from the pulled teeth of his slaves. Sister, by the way, cast me as George in a class presentation. Pictures included. I'll bet you also know or never taught know that Potus Uno and Martha owned more than 300 humans, African slaves. Sit down. It gets worse. Worse. All of this is from a report in the Washington Post written by opinions editor Michelle L. Norris on June 26, 2020. Michelle called this data from Erica Armstrong Dunbar, professor of history at Rutgers Book. Never caught the Washington's relentless pursuit of the runaway slave Ona Judge. Well, you can probably order that online. Ona, the book makes clear, was only one of Washington's 300 collection. These were slaves, human beings, employed by our nation's first family as chambermaids, postillions, cooks, waiters, laborers, seamstresses, and valets, all without reunion representation, minimum wage, health benefits, or weekends free. It truly gets worse, worse. I'll bet your teachers, grandparents, history books, and Sister Rosanna forgot to tell you that when Ona escaped, Martha was heartbroken because she had promised to gift her granddaughter 
as attendant. So she had George send men with dogs to bring Ona back. Dogs! Dogs! Like the Germans used in the death camps. That was George, the guy on the, the dollar bill, the cherry tree kid, who never told a lie. That George. So there it is. Skeptical? Read Professor Dunberg's book for yourself. All of the facts have been laying around in the dark for centuries. So I understand. What with COVID-19, the cost of erasing Washington from the capital, state currency, buildings, libraries, schools, streets, and avenues, and that big obelisk on the National Mall that POTUS Temp wants to put his name on, the cost would be staggering. And how about the Washington Post that brought down Richard Nixon? and it's currently aiming its guns at the administration temp and the people. That would include black and white, like Booker T. Washington, educator, author, and orator, whose real name was Talia Farrow. And there's Dinah Washington, Carrie Washington. Uh, okay, let's see some hands. Who's going to volunteer to tell Denzel? Imagine Oscar night next when Denzel would have to sit in the first row as the host announces, Best Actor, Denzel Truman. Yeah. Well, I guess George is going to get a pass. Thanks for listening to On the Edge with J.P. Divine. On the Edge with J.P. Divine Audio is made possible by our subscribers like you. Thank you for listening and supporting local journalism in Central Maine.